I wanted to bring into the conversation now Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Congressman, thank you so much for being here and congratulations. Well, delighted to join you, Will, and, and so appreciative of neighbors here in Travis County and part of Williamson County who've given me an opportunity to continue serving Congress. Yeah, you are the projected winner of Congressional District 37. This is a brand new district for you. I know during your congressional career you've represented four districts, but how does it feel now to represent 37 of all of them? Well, I'm really back to more of the neighborhoods that I grew up in here. Austin's the only town I've ever called home. And this is the district uh, largely that I was elected from initially uh, years ago. But yes, uh, the state Republicans have given me a chance to see so much of Texas, just not all at once. So I've been in, had offices in McAllen and San Antonio and have been run down to LaGrange and Hallettsville. I met a lot of good people, but uh, there'll be less highway travel and more opportunity to focus just on the city of Austin. As you're looking at the election results coming in, uh, we don't yet know who will control Congress ultimately during this next legislative term. I I'm wondering how you are preparing yourself should the Republicans gain the majority in the House? Well, that's the way it's been. The year I was elected to Congress, Newt Gingrich was sworn in. Hmm. It took another 14 years before we had a Democratic uh, majority in the House. Uh, we can't stand to wait that long again. I would say the numbers as I see them now suggest that there will be a Republican control of the House, hopefully Democratic control in the Senate. Uh, it, will, uh, it will be a real challenge because so many of the values that I represent from Austin, the issues we would like to deal with, like the climate crisis, uh, assuring reproductive freedom, uh, voting rights, those are issues that will be blocked in the House now as well as with the filibuster in the Senate. There is one thing, though, that I would say that is clear, whatever the final outcome of these individual races, Democrats will accept the election results. You don't just accept the elections you win. You have to accept the elections you lose. That's at the heart of democracy. And one of my real concerns about this election is not just who controls the House or Senate, but the large number of election deniers who really have given up on democracy. We cannot do that. Uh, too many people have have fought and died and struggled to preserve democracy in our country. And it is essential that we keep that as a core value and strive to assure that. And I think the way we accept the wins and the losses tonight will be an indication of our commitment to that democracy. Hmm. As we approach this next legislative term with potentially a different party in power, what will your priorities be representing the people in District 37? Well, I've served as chair of the health subcommittee and now will probably be serving as the what's called the ranking Democrat on the committee, hmm. uh, looking for any areas where we can get cooperation to improve health care, but knowing that we will face some real challenges that will be more on defense and trying to protect the uh, progress that we've made, uh, particularly under the Affordable Care Act in assuring more Americans an opportunity to get access to a family physician. Uh, I will uh, be interested in taking steps to assure the long-term solvency of Medicare and Social Security and see that they are not impaired by Republicans who have not had as much confidence in those programs. Uh, and uh, I think mainly this year, before this Congress is over, wanting to assure that we have the appropriations for the federal government to continue operating. Those include the appropriations for our uh, providing more defense aid to Ukraine. I think democracy and freedom is on the line there. I had the legislation to uh, provide sanctions against the Russians the day after Putin began his war crimes in uh, Ukraine. And I think it's very important that we stand firmly in a bipartisan way to support uh, Ukraine and provide it the weapons and the finances that it needs. You bringing up the aid for Ukraine and the ongoing war there uh, that Russia is waging, some of the Republicans have stated publicly uh, leading up to the election that there would be no more financial assistance or aid given to Ukraine. Uh, what's your reaction to that, knowing that the balance of power may change? Yeah, I'm very troubled by it. There were 57 Republicans who voted against assistance for Ukraine the first time that came up earlier this year. Uh, I do think that there are a number of Republicans that share our view that freedom is at stake there in Ukraine. 
Uh, and if there's a free and fair vote, there'll be enough Republicans and enough Democrats to continue to support it. Uh, it's only the fringe with Trump uh, that uh, think Putin is a genius for what he's done in Ukraine. I think most people are appalled by it. And if they continue to let their elected officials know whether they're Democratic or Republican, I think we can sustain support for Ukraine. And it's vital to the security of families right here in Central Texas uh, that we not let uh, this kind of authoritarian aggression and war crimes continue. Before I let you go, Congressman, I just want to give you one more chance to talk to the voters out there who are now sending you back to Congress to this time represent Congressional District 37 here in Texas. Well, thanks so very much. I've tried to represent uh, the values of Austin even when I didn't have more than a fraction of Austin. And now this is an opportunity to really focus on issues here in our community, the many challenges we face on transportation and affordability, to work with our city and county and state delegation uh, in trying to find solutions. And if there's Republican control in the House and obstruction of our legislative agenda, to work with the Biden administration to see as much use of executive action as possible to do things like in, encourage clean air and water and combating the climate crisis. In all of this, whether you agree or disagree with me, we believe in trying to provide first-rate service to anyone who has a legitimate complaint, a problem with the federal government, whether it's Social Security, taxes, whatever, uh, and sometimes just to provide a little information to try to cut through the red tape. So our office is available to serve all, regardless of party or philosophy, but I will uh, uh, be accepting the Republican victory in the House, but not the Republican values, and continuing to, uh, to fight for those concerns that I believe most Austinites share. Congressman Lloyd Doggett, thank you so much for taking time tonight out of your busy schedule to join us. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Will, very much. Very good to talk to you and your viewers. Yes, all right. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and again, congratulations. Thanks.